Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson, Kid Rock, Dana White, several others, seen entering Madison Square Garden and having the entire arena screaming and cheering. Now, my friends, I must ask you, how is it that Donald Trump, a man they say everybody hates, you know, he's, he's unfavorable in this country, is in New York City, which is quite literally probably the bastion of Democrat strongholds. And yet when Donald Trump walks out and waves, the entire arena screams and cheers. Because I think Trump is substantially more popular than they want you to believe. I think the polls are probably all wrong. I think most people probably believe the polls are all wrong. And it may not be that Donald Trump is the most popular guy in the country. I'm not saying that he's got 60, 70 percent support or favorability. I just don't think that that people actually hate Trump as much as as much as they claim in the media. I think what we have, and I think probably a lot of you agree is that the people who work in media, the corporate establishment, the neocons, and the neolibs despise Donald Trump nine to one. And because of that, they create this disproportionate image of what the country actually thinks and believes. Now, I don't think I'm saying saying anything that's uh, revelatory. I've heard it over and over again, going back to uh, 2016, 2015, when I heard from the likes of uh, Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert. If you're if you're familiar with the uh, with, with this crew and the, the Bitcoin stuff, but they said that they were uh, that when they came to the United States, they kept hearing in the media that Trump was unpopular, that everyone hated him. And then they land in the United States and they see Trump signs everywhere. And they're like, OK, this guy's going to win. The machine is angry. And you've got these journalists trying to play this game of, oh, Trump's an extremist. But we've got these clips from uh, uh, with Steve Bannon talking to the corporate press. And he's like, Trump's a moderate in our movement. They show another clip where uh, he says, Trump said this, I am your voice. And then he said, I am your retribution today. And that's right. Now I've got news articles popping up saying that Donald Trump is going to have sweeping raids and mass deportations if he is elected president. Why not? It's really, really interesting to me. I'm seeing all these videos and uh, of Gen Z. People are saying things like, uh, you know, Gen Z is lazy and stuff like this. Actually, we went over this last week on Timcast IRL. Gen Z is substantially more based than people want to give him credit for. And for better or for worse, what we're seeing now is over the past several years, support for same sex marriage among Gen Z has dropped to boomer levels, meaning millennials are more likely to support same sex marriage than Gen Z. Gen Z is becoming more conservative, which flies in the face of what I thought. It, my, my, my main argument is that more conservatives have more kids. Therefore, Gen Z will be more conservative on the basis of being raised by conservatives from conservative families. Many on the right argue, no, the left will indoctrinate them. And my argument is this is a major component as to why Gen Z is more conservative. But I don't think it's that they're being indoctrinated. I think it's that they were raised conservative. But in fact, it appears to be both. The fact that since 2021 to 2023, Support for same-sex marriage among Gen Z has dropped, I think, like 11 points or no more than that. I think it's like I think it's 15 points shows that Gen Z is actually changing their views and becoming more and more conservative as time goes on. So when you see Donald Trump walk out with these superstars, Tucker Carlson, you got to wonder. Now, here's the funny thing. Donald Trump was saying maybe Tucker Carlson for VP. And uh, I would absolutely love that ticket, my friends. I'm not a conservative. Absolutely not. And uh, uh, man, something really amazing this week. I I met this weekend the mom of one of the kids at the Loudoun County High School who's protesting against males in the girls' bathroom. So we covered the story. They got the big banner and everything. Sure enough, I'm actually sitting down talking with some lady. And, you know, politics comes up. And then she mentions that's her kid. And I'm like, wow, right nearby, we've got people making history, young people who are saying we've had enough with this craziness. There's something truly fascinating when you have teenagers, 14, 15, 16, 17, whatever, in high school. And these are young people who have decided we know what's right. We just know we don't need adults to come here and tell us what politics to push. We've decided to take action. We are walking out. We are dropping these banners. Often what you get from young people who are politically active 
is that they're just repeating the the, the corporate press narrative and the in the, in the uh, Walmart and Amazon slogans like Black Lives Matter, climate change stuff. None of that is con- like none, none of that is controversial in the mainstream. They're just like, hey, I get to go out of school and we'll wave a flag or whatever. I guess I saw it on TV. What we're seeing in Loudoun County is the inverse. These are young people who are protesting what is mainstream and saying we reject this. Now, that's something truly fascinating because you do not have the mainstream support. The concern is if you speak out about these things, you will get targeted. You will get canceled. So to see these people, young people now rising up and saying we know what is right. I look at a video like this of Donald Trump walking out into Madison Square Garden. And I'm just absolutely fascinated by this. I am very, very confident as to what we're going to see in the future. Let me play this clip for you real quick. And then we'll uh, we'll read where we're currently at with Donald Trump. We got a bunch of news. Uh, Tim Scott is out of the race. Nikki Haley. Oh, boy. The media is pushing Nikki Haley like crazy. But what I love about this clip where you got Tucker Carlson, big old ish eating grin walking out with Donald Trump is maybe maybe we get a uh, Trump Carlson ticket. Look, the video is actually not all that complicated. Here you go. Listen to that. Hear that? This is absolutely amazing. Tucker, Kid Rock, Dana White, Donald Trump. I think we got Trump Jr. And President Trump will be here to witness all of it. Four of the very best fighters in the world yep. set to take their cracks at light wow. heavyweight and interim heavyweight gold, respectively. We move over to Pay you hear this? Shortly. Donald Trump descending on the scene. Yahoo News reports UFC crowd erupts. As Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson, and Kid Rock show up ringside. Listen, a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, well, it's UFC. UFC is a conservative thing. Like, uh, UFC is like a normie thing, man. When I, so uh, we go hang out at like the sports book or whatever, any, any of these casinos. We go, we go to a restaurant. We go to like B-dubs or whatever when the fight is on. It's good fun. But these are regular people who are not overtly political, who are watching this stuff. It's mainstream sports. UFC is massive. If Donald Trump's walking out, in New York City, and they are all screaming at the top of their lungs, cheering for him. Don't believe the lies, my friend. Don't believe the lies. They say, although Trump is currently on trial in New York for committing fraud, he's had a, a fun weekend as he appeared at Madison Square Garden for UFC 295 alongside Kid Rock. Man, the former president of the United States is in attendance at one of the biggest UFC events despite being on trial for fraud. Trump was seen. We get it. Kid Rock made headlines with Bud Light. We get it. It's really, really funny, too, because now UFC is sponsored by by Bud Light. But uh, you know what, man? I I absolutely you know why I love UFC? Aside from the fact it's fun, it's entertaining. I'm not a big fighter. You know, I, I don't I don't watch stuff. I don't know the moves. You know, I can't tell you about uh, technicalities or anything like that. For me, it's like general entertainment. Me, I, I skateboard. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do a switch tray flip. I don't know about those uh, those low blow haymakers or whatever it is these guys are doing. But I love UFC. Because these athletes are the most, I'm going to say it, based athletes. They're based. Based AF. And the reason is, these guys are, are fearless. Okay? And, and maybe fearless, is, they're courageous is a better way to put it. I have no problem with people who are scared. I have no problem with people being scared. In fact, I actually have uh, issues if you're not scared in certain circumstances. You're out in the middle of a chaotic zone. There's violence going on. You should be scared. But courage it's not the lack of fear. It's the ability and willingness to 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 do what must be done in the face of your fears. These guys, they're courageous. These UFC fighters. Why? You got you got every other sport where all these athletes are like, look, man, I don't want to rock the boat. If I say anything, I could get fired. I could lose my sponsorships. UFC fighters, they're just too rough. They're too tough. OK, when you've been when, when you get punched in the face as your sport for a living, you get physically injured. You're like, dude, I don't care what you think you can do to me. I don't care if you think you can take away my income, bro. I get punched for a living. These guys punch and get punched. It's their job. They are carved out of stone. That's why I'm a big fan of USC, because we see these fighters go on Twitter and they are courageous. And I wish I wish more people had that courage. 
I really do. That's why I'm so uh, uh, I was I was gushing when I meet this uh, this woman talking about what her what her family, what her kids were doing in high school, challenging the machine. I'm like, this is what I hope and pray for every day, dude. You know what I see right now? I see a, a black circle in front of me. It's 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 a camera. I am I, talking about what I think, what I feel to a camera. There's no one else around me. And I live in the middle of nowhere. I lived in cities before. And so, uh, you know, I make a living just saying what I feel like saying. And to be fair, I often make the joke. I got no problem if at the end of the day, at, at the end of all of this, I end up living in a van down by the river. You know, I, I can make peace with that. I know what the world is. Hard work is, 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 is how you live. But uh, that's just me. And there are a lot of people who are who are concerned and scared that they'll lose their jobs. And you know what? Some of these people I meet, even when they speak up, they're they're scared. And that's courage. They say things like, I could lose my job, but, you know, my family knows what's right. And so we, we, we try to, you know, tiptoe around this, but we'll speak up where we have to. And I'm like, courage. And we're seeing it more and more and more. And that's what I'm absolutely all about and what I respect. So when I see these UFC fighters, when I it was Sean Strickland, man, this is so amazing. When he comes out and he was like, Bud Light, I'm going to fix you, baby. And, and all of us are like, I don't know. Oh, are you kidding me? Because you know what? You know, I'll take I'll take full blame for this one. You can roast me all you want. When when I saw Sean Strickland say that he's so happy about the Bud Light sponsorship, they're getting a lot of money for this. I'm like, no, nah, man, come on. We got to push back. We got to win this one. And then I was too stupid to realize it. He broke it down. He said, no, no, no. Bud Light is now getting behind every word that I say. And I went, this guy got it. Because now these UFC fighters who are fearless, who have courage, are going to stand up pre-fight, after the fight, and they're going to say, here's what I think politically. And that big old Bud Light logo was right behind him. See, I made that mistake. I said, I would never let Bud Light put that logo behind me because it's insulting and I reject it. And that was actually really short-sighted. I don't think we'll ever get a Bud Light sponsorship, but I got to be honest. If Bud Light came to me right now and said, we would like to give you money to put a Bud Light logo behind you, I'd be like, I'll take it. Why? Because then you are you are winning the culture war. And that's the, that's the short sightedness that, that I didn't realize. And that's one of the reasons why I love these UFC guys. We want them to give us money to keep saying what we say. We want their product on our shows. So then when we give our political opinions, their money is behind us and not the weird woke garbage. But let's get into the politics, baby, because we got a lot going on. Let's talk about how popular Trump really is. The real clear politics average laid out right before your very eyes. Trump versus Biden right now across the board in aggregate up 1.1 against Joe Biden. Now, a few polls show a tie and Biden has three of the polls. It's really funny that Trump is up 1.1 considering he has most of the polls and CNN has Trump up four points. Wow. Over at 538, we can see that uh, Trump just has it. I mean, you look at all of these polls and Trump is absolutely crushing it. Now, I'm really interested to see what happens when you throw uh, Kennedy in because the latest polls. Here we go. Big village. When RFK Jr. is in the race, Donald Trump crushes Joe Biden for the most part. Typically, not always. Look at this one. Big village has a poll with Biden at 29 <laughs> percent. They got to get him out. It's not going to be Joe Biden. We all know it. All of these polls showing that when Kennedy's in the race, Trump is crushing it. Now, TIPP has Trump losing to Biden, but I don't know if Kennedy plays a role in that. Because most SSRS, CNN, most other polls have Trump beating Joe Biden. Vivek Ramaswamy nailed it at the GOP debates last week when he said that it is not going to be Joe Biden. Gavin Newsom's running a shadow campaign, and we all know it. You know my, my big concern with uh, Vivek? Vivek, shout out. It may be a little bit too high level. A little bit too esoteric. And this is the this is the angle that the mainstream press is trying to make the argument. That, that's what they're saying against Trump. You take a look at this. 530, it says, do Americans have a favorable or unfavorable opinion of Donald Trump? 54.9% unfavorable, 40.9% favorable. I don't believe it. Sorry. Have a nice day. I don't believe it. I just really, really do not believe it. YouGov, 84. Uh, is, this, is this a joke? What is this? Among Republicans, I'm like, OK, what is this? Among Republicans, Trump's favorability is 84. Washington Post claims it's 66 percent, 31 percent unfavorable. I don't believe it. I'm sorry, I just don't. That UFC crowd was screaming at the top of their lungs. OK, you can't tell me that for some reason 
a bunch of UFC fans are not representative of at least to a greater degree the average American public than these polls would be. I'm telling you this. You know, Ian Crossland on IRL makes like likes to make the point polls are stupid because they only poll 5,000 people. I'm like, dude, they are uh, fairly accurate. Polls are pretty good. It's not like we just, oh, here's the number, I guess. No, no, no. Listen, favorability is hard to track. But when you have like election polling, these organizations do a pretty decent job. Not so much in the past eight or so years, but they're still decently close enough. The margin of error has been getting greater, meaning their ability to poll is getting worse. Fair point. But Rasmussen did a pretty good job. They were they were very, very close. They polled people, said, here's our, here's what we think when we poll people. Then the election re- results come out. We're like, wow, they their margin of error was like 0.7%. Like, that's really good. So when I see this, I'm like, okay, perhaps, but I tell you this, I don't believe it. I don't believe that you can have a poll showing Donald Trump with 53% unfavorability and 45% favorability. And then at UFC, everyone is screaming at the top of their lungs. Now, okay, there's there's that clip of Bill Burr. I think it's Bill Burr's wife, people are claiming, flicking off Donald Trump. Sure. Not everybody likes Donald Trump. Duh. But I don't think it is, it's at least, it's, it's at least inverted. Listen, it's one thing to have everyone at the UFC cheering for Donald Trump. You're like, OK, well, you know, UFC, maybe it's more right leaning. I don't think so. I think it's I think UFC is very normy. And then it's like, OK, well, you know, then it, but it's but it's just, you know, this one arena. It's, it's in New York City, dude. New York City screaming and cheering for Donald Trump. What did every conservative from outside New York drive to Madison Square Garden? People in New York like UFC. I mean, it's a massive market for it. I think what we're seeing here is they want you to think nobody likes Trump. A lot of people are pretending not to like Trump because they think everyone else doesn't like Trump. And this is what really grinds my gears, baby. When I hear people say that, you know, oh, I like Donald Trump, but I got to keep my voice down. I'm like, like I was talking to this lady and, you know, she's mentioning that they're, they're not like super conservative, but they're very anti work. They're very concerned about this stuff. And they, 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 they're concerned about their workplaces. And I said, you know, it's funny. You don't speak up at work because you're concerned everyone's woke. How much do you want to bet? 80% of your office, 90% completely agrees with you. But everyone is scared of everyone else. I'm telling you, it feels, it feels like this. You're sitting there in this room looking around and you're going like, man, I really wish I could speak up about how I don't like this, but I don't want to get fired. So I'll just go along with it and just nod. And the reality is everyone hates it. I'll give you an example. Barcelona in Reston, Virginia, an amazing tapas restaurant. I go in there with my girlfriend and we get some tapas. Delicious food, by the way. Actually, one of my favorite restaurants. We've been there like three times. So good. I really do recommend it. Man, if you're in the area, the bone marrow, man, some of the best food I've ever had in my life. We did a big company event there because it was so good. But I show up, we eat, everything's normal, we leave. Next time we come back, I show up, one of the servers says, yeah, uh, you know, one, one of the people who works here was, was super excited you came, they're big fans or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. That's really awesome. Shook his hand. Nice to meet you. So then we decide, you know what? That's really cool. I, re- I really like that. Let's, uh, let's do a company event. Like we'll invite, what, we'll invite the crew out. We'll get dinner here. And a dude comes up to me and he was like, I know you're not going to get this a lot here, but I'm a big fan of what you do. And I was like, to be honest, like four people have already come up to me and shook my hand and said, thank you for the work that I do. And so I'm like, listen, man, you're in a place like Reston, Virginia. It's a suburb of D.C. It's like very densely liberal. Yet you have these regular people in a suburban Democrat district coming up to me and saying, yo, what up and give me a fist bump. I really do appreciate it. It's amazing. We go to another restaurant and a guy's like, man, I love your stuff. I actually watch on Facebook. And I'm like, Facebook of all places. My point is this. The dude thought he was the only one there who's going to recognize me and like the videos and the content that we make. And in reality, four other people, I'm sorry, three other people, four plus him, had come up and said, we're big fans. One guy had his family with him like, oh, it's so cool to see you here. And I'm like, dude, I really appreciate it. I thank you so much for watching. You know, look, we're not the biggest political commentary channel at all. There was a period where we briefly were. Don't get me wrong. It's crazy. In uh, 2020, we were getting 120 million hits per month. And uh, now we get like 50 or 60, you know, and there's other channels that are way bigger. And it, I, I got to tell you, it is really crazy to me, too. I see all these other channels, they grow so much faster, but we just I do my thing. I am who I am. My point is, don't think you're the only one. It's just 
And that's what I said. I was like, hey, to this guy, I'm like, a bunch of people have come up already. There are more people than you think who are all around you who agree with you. The issue is, like James O'Keefe says, you got to be brave. And I know it's tough. You know, I don't know what to tell you. You know, it, it is really hard. You're, you're concerned that if you do speak up, you're going to get in trouble. And that may be the case. That may be the case. But I firmly believe that if everyone, I'm not saying you got to be pro-life. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying you got to be conservative. And, you know, it's really funny because um, we have people like Stephen Marsh and Jenk Uger and others say, audience capture, that's what you're subject to, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, like, I, I, I'm willing to bet that like, Half the people who watch my videos are pro-life or more. And then I get in arguments with people and our guests about my position on abortion. And I'm like, I, I you know, anti-abortion for the most part. But I'm in that difficult, more libertarian perspective that I, I just can't break it. Sorry. My point is this. I don't think it's audience capture at all. In fact, I think when I when we do the data analysis on this channel and who you guys are and who watches these videos. What we find is that I think we're in this negative space of politics for the most part. The diehard MAGA movement, Trump supporters have their spaces. They're not the biggest fans of me. They were back in 2020. They're like, yeah, Tim's going to vote for Trump. And then I said, Trump lost. And they're like, OK, we don't like this guy anymore. The left obviously does not like me. And so I think this is the negative space, the politically homeless, the uh, uh, more eclectic or, or maybe, you know, uh, people with political views that don't necessarily fit perfectly into any one core community. Now, this does a few things for a few things for us and for all of you guys. We get hit up by a lot of prominent individuals. We've got some big uh, political personalities, some presidential candidates who want to come on the show now. I'm not just saying right wing. The reason is they want the negative space. By negative space, I mean, many of you are probably voting for Trump. Not all of you. Uh, we have a mix of libertarian, post-liberal and conservative with like moderate Trump supporters being, I think right now, like high 20s to low 30 percent. We did, we did polling like we've done various kinds of like informal and and I don't want to say scientific polling, or anything, but like asking people. And we find typically that, you know, it's like you look at the things I talk about. We all kind of are in a similar space. We disagree on some issues, but we're probably going to vote for Trump. Not necessarily. And it's not because we're diehard Trump fans. We don't think Trump is perfect. We criticize him quite a bit. But the, the machine, you get the point. This is where there's an opportunity for Democrats and Republicans because we aren't zealots. We're we're looking for the best path forward and we want to weed out the corruption in government. And so Republicans are smart. They get this. Conservatives, Trump supporters, they know this. We want to talk to these people. And then you get people on the left now starting to realize, why did Jenk Uger come on this show? Ah, he's starting to realize like, hmm. But that's the thing about audience capture. It ain't here. It ain't here. We all argue and debate. We all disagree on things. I've had Tim Cast members call in the Discord and and argue with me. That's that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, baby. Let me. Um, we're gonna go a little bit longer this morning. I got to show you this clip from uh, uh, Jack Posobiec put up of uh, Steve Bannon. Take a listen to this. Well, the campaign. Donald Trump stood up at the at the convention and said, "I am your voice." And now Trump says, "I am your retribution. I am your retribution." Yes, he is, baby. <laughs> We're looking vengeful, grievance driven. You know that the way people win in America is to talk about the future. They talk about the future. I'm so sick of the future. They talk, they talk I'm about so the voters. Sick of people say elections about the future. Yeah. That is total. Bullshit. Are they about the voters? It's about the lived experience of the voters. Yeah. Because the lived experience of their life sucks. And the reason it sucks is a fucking unfeeling uniparty in Washington, D.C. that says, go fuck yourself. You're nothing but serfs, and we don't give a shit about you. So you yep. Yeah, dude, Steve Bannon is absolutely correct. Here we go. We got to we got to go in here. The civil war between the Republican establishment and MAGA. And in there, you have litmus test. OK, and one of the litmus tests is Trump. not just President Trump, but also particularly the stealing of the 2020 election. That is a fundamental tenet of this movement. By the way, they've made it all about Trump. OK, this movement is ascended and is going to go on long after Donald Trump is going to get more powerful and broader. Even if a Democrat was to win, there's no compromise here. What you're saying is even if Trump lost to Biden, there's no going back to the old no, Republican party. farther right than Trump. Farther right. President Trump is a moderate in our movement. Yep. You're going to pine in future years that you wished Donald Trump was around. Yep. That's right. I see Trump winning right now. I think the polls show it. I think they're lying about Trump's favorability. You, look, whatever your opinion is on 2020, I think 
it, it's really fun. I, I, man, I get I get these in the you, talking about disagreements. I get all these messages in our Timcast members discord of people saying, aha, voter fraud is proven true and stuff like that. No, it's not. Like, I'm sorry if you want to believe it's true, but I'm not here to lie. OK, I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. And that, you know, man, I look at some of these uh, lefty channels and I'm like, I'm so jealous sometimes. Granted, I, I, it, it's, it's a vapid existence, but it's like this dude's got like 2.5 million subscribers now. Like, how did he grow so quickly? Ah, you look at all his videos. He just says whatever they want to hear. I'll talk, talk like Trump. Maybe that'll do it for me. Nah, man, look. So there is a story out right now. It's really interesting, and I'm tracking it, and we'll see what happens, where uh, lawyers in Fulton County for the state are withdrawing. And the concern is, or the belief, it may be that Fulton destroyed the ballots that are supposed to be uh, uh, gone over to determine whether or not they're real or fake. And so the issue is, I think 2020 was shady, 100 percent shady. The Election Integrity Partnership, the U.S. government, was actively trying to suppress and censor me. They they called me a spreader of misinformation, even though I was not advocating for this claim that widespread fraud led to Donald Trump uh, losing. My position has always been that executives and judges altered the rules of the election in several states. Fact. The Constitution prescribes only the state legislatures can decide, and they wanted to review this. Donald Trump's team said, if the states want a review of these election results because the rules were changed, Pence needs to kick it back and give them that review. And Pence said no. And that is shocking. And when Texas sued Pennsylvania, because Texas said the 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 judges in the state changed the rules, you can't do this. If you are not playing by the rules that we are, your vote is I'll put it this way. You're in a competition. And the competition is whoever collects the most uh, ping pong balls wins. But the rules are everyone has to use the same scooper to pick up the ping pong balls. And then you look over homeboy over here has got substantially more. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. But he's he's changed how he's collecting the, the balls like that. That's not fair. If he's collecting them in a different way, in violation of the rules we all agreed upon, why do I lose because of this? Why am I playing a game where they get to change the rules and win? No, 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 no. We all got to play by the same rules. And the same rules are this. The state legislatures decide. Supreme Court said F off. And so the question's never been answered. That's how I view how corrupt 2020 was. But I think in the end, Trump lost. And this is the message I tried sending to all the Trump supporters, and they all didn't want to hear it. Ballots didn't come from China. None of that stuff. What they did was they played dirty games to expand what counted as a ballot for them. Signature verification was like, everything's fine. What was happening was ballot harvesting. They changed the rules. They allowed themselves to collect ballots in ridiculous ways. Why? They don't want to make fake ballots to get caught. They don't need to. They can send a guy to a nursing home and get 100 ballots. The ground game was through the roof and their legal game was through the roof. And you can argue it was stolen. by. Uh, in, in, in what, I, what I mean by this is, what, we always got to clarify, was it rigged and stolen? Because you mean executives, governors, judges, they changed the rules and collected ballots normally should not count? Fair point. They shouldn't count because the signatures were weird, because it was widespread ballot harvesting and things like this, which is legal in many states. But Trump got out game. However, Here's why, here's why I bring this up. Trump gained 10 million more votes this time around. It's crazy. 70, 74 million votes. Ain't no way Biden's getting that one back. Now, I don't know if retribution is, is, the, is what people want to hear, but I know Joe Biden can't pull it off. And they're going to tell you everything in the book. They're going to lie. They're going to cheat. And they're going to say, they're going to say, everyone hates Trump. And I'm like, I don't, I don't believe it, man. I think we're at this point now, culturally, where you just can't swing the anti-Trump narrative. You really, it, it's so different these days. It really is. I remember back in the day, people really, really were scared to say that they supported Trump or defended him. Now it's very different with Bud Light. With, like, we got a bunch of cultural stories for you, man. Miss, Miss Universe, I think it is. I don't know. One of them declaring bankruptcy. Oh man, I got one for you. Get what go broke. The Marvels. Get this. Do you even know what that is? Probably not. The latest MCU movie, Marvel movie, 
the lowest opening ever. Get woke, go broke. We are all witnessing it. Why? You know, I think I think uh, it's been 10 years of culture war insanity. And a lot of us, how many how many of you had kids in the past 10 years? A lot of you did. And uh, this is going to make people oh so conservative. Oh, I love this. When I'm talking to this mom about her fear, you know, her kids, she was like having kids changed a lot. Man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Having kids certainly does change a lot. You know, I was talking to my friend is this dude and he uh, was talking about how he was helping out local kids in the neighborhood and he wanted he, he wanted to, you know, encourage them to play music. And people online were calling him a creepo and a pedo for uh, uh, trying to help some 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 kids. And he was like, that's so crazy. He's like, all I did was buy some stuff for some kids in the neighborhood and like the, and their and their parents like went to their parents like, hey, let me help out your family. And I'm like, yo, two big things. They tell women, oh, it's so hard. You're not going to be able to get a job or support yourself. Don't have kids. They tell men, ha, huh, you want to have you, you, you like being around kids. You must be a pedophile. You see what they do? They, they've created this narrative. And I say they, I should say it's either a cultural pressure or an intentional uh, uh, suppression of uh, population. Guys who enjoy like teaching children or, or being around kids are always assumed to be creeps and pedophiles. Not assumed to. They attack you online for this. Maybe you want to be a good dad. Maybe you want to inspire the next generation. I got a lot to say about this, you know, but I'm going to save it because the culture war is everything. But yo, shout out to Steve Bannon. Shout out to Kid Rock, Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson, Don Jr., Dana White. Let's get it, baby. This next year is going to be fire and it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's talk culture. Let's talk uh, culture war. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.